Good morning, and welcome to Preparing to Survive and Thrive Homesteading Channel with Charlie B. I freeze dried some of my peppers that I took from my extended harvest. Um, if you haven't looked at that video, please take a look at it. Um, it's quite impressive what this clock was able to survive nights down to in the 20s, several frosts, um, a light freeze even, and I still got good peppers. So you can see what these look like before I ended up freeze drying. But these are the habaneros. And I did not take a video of them before because I didn't think, I thought they were going to be a little bit um, brighter in color and still retain their look, but they didn't. Um, I'm gonna put gloves on because these are hot and um, I don't wanna burn my eyes again today for rubbing them. So when I did these, and I didn't film it, sorry, I literally just took a pair of scissors, my kitchen scissors, right here, and I cut the peppers in half. Um, I took out some of the seeds and saved them, but um, I'm going to give you a closer look on this one. You can see what it looks like. So they kind of got a little wrinkly, pruney looking. But I'm going to just put these in bags, seal them, and um, put probably 200cc oxygen absorbers in them. If you haven't seen me seal anything before, please look at one of my other freeze drying videos. I normally do it um, in front of you, but today I've got a lot of chores to do and a lot of places I have to go. So I'll be back here in a few minutes when I'll show you what I'm going to do with the cayenne peppers. So as you can see, I am literally just putting these in here. Um, I'm not going to grind them up. I've already inhaled just a little bit of the um, pepper dust and it's up my nose and it's already kind of stinging. I grew these for my daughter and I'm sure they'll be great when we go to eat them or have to add something to them. But I probably won't be growing these next year so I'll make sure I have enough. And I'm going to add as many trays as I can to this one bag, which I should probably get two trays. And then I'll seal them up. These are the cayenne peppers that I'll be freeze drying. As you can see, I have just placed them on there. This is what I can't pull from my garden on the extending the harvest. Um, I even have, and I did not plant these, just have to find it here. These right here, these little red evil devils, these are California Reapers. My um, daughter-in-law and her fiance planted these and gave me some of them, so I'm freeze drying them. Um, so these will be going in the freeze dryer and we'll be back. Well, hello, we're back. Um, we got our um, cayenne peppers and our California Reapers. They're freeze dried. Can you see how good they look? I guess this is the sugars that have come out of the tops and they're very dry. I'll do a snap here for you. I hope you heard that. Now, um, they're, they're, most of them are very dry some of them are still a little rubbery, and it's usually the ones that look like they are imploded. So I'm going to pull these out real fast here and just kind of leave them set off to the side. I'll just um, put them in another bag so I'm not, just in case something would not be totally right. Um, they had been in the dryer for about 28 hours. I think it was 28 hours and 10 minutes, something like that. And I would rather err on caution and not expose something that's not totally dry. Those could totally dry up like what my plums did and end up um, being wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and get these bagged. I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm putting the California Reapers, because <clears throat> they're going to be hot, in this little bag all by themselves. And um, the other ones will go in... the bigger bags that I did the habaneros in, and I'll show you those in a few minutes. And um, 
I got a neat trick from the Canadian Prepper, Nate, about sealing these. And I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. So let me get all these guys all bagged up. Get my um, oxygen absorbers in here also. And we'll be back once we get to the sealing part. See you in a little bit. Well, I've got everything bagged up, and except for the ones that are rubbery. I haven't put those in a bag yet, but you can see I have my 100cc oxygen absorber in there. What I'm going to do is, and like I said, I learned this from the Canadian prepper. Um, he was freeze drying some stuff. We have a food saver right here, and these are the kind of bags that you have in them. There is two different layers. One is more of a smooth layer, and one is a rougher layer. Okay, and what I did was I cut it so I just have the rougher layer and a strip. It's going limp, and I literally am just sliding that right in the corner of this bag. I'll leave a little bit of it stick out. I'm going to tap it down a little bit, and I'm going to put this in the food saver. Now, this is also a good way to test to make sure your bag doesn't have a hole in it. When I put this in here, I make sure it's lined up with this gray and this little tray that goes in there. Now, this is going to be a little noisy. Hold it down. I lock it. And I vacuum seal it. So this is sealing it. Um, however, we both know that this will not be the strongest seal for a freeze-dried bag that you want to keep in storage for 25 years, possibly. So I'm going to pull that out, pop it up, and as you can see, that tag is still in there. But apparently, in order for a food saver to work, you have to have something as rough to let the air seep out through it. And I am just going to seal this again with my Harvest Right sealer. And I double seal it just to be on the safe side. Now, so you saw my peppers and I'm gonna turn you a little bit. Um, some of the bags really sucked a lot of the air out of them and if I heard them cracking too much, I would literally just go ahead and hit the seal button so it would start to seal it here in the food saver. So. Well, that's how we are preserving our harvest of our hot peppers. So if you like my content, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'd like to thank my subscribers for being here. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. I'll be seeing you soon. So here's a little post note at the end. I am going to try the Food Saver Vacuum Sealer with the piece that sucks it out with the mason jar lids. I'm going to try it two different ways. Um, this one, the green one, says to vacuum sealer. So it's in there. And this one I'm going to slide into the wide mouth jar. Uh, fitter. I, I don't know a better word for it. I'm going to slide this back. So first way I'm going to try it is without the ring on it. I'm just going to put the lid on it. I don't know if this is going to work. Um, try this again because last time it didn't work when I tried it on for my peaches. So here we go. Let's see. Just going to hit vacuum and seal. Oh, got to close it first. Didn't seem like it took very long. Maybe I was doing it wrong the last time when I was trying to do this on my um, plums. If you haven't seen that video, please take a look at it. And all the lights went off. Let's see. Here's the moment of truth. Mm. Huh? It did seem.
still. Yes, so maybe I was doing it wrong. I'll have to try this with other vegetables again. Like I said, it worked when I used the um, regular mouth jars when I was storing my eggs. So, but this is what I decided to do with the peppers that were more of a dehydrated texture and less of a freeze-dried texture. It's kind of pretty. <laughs> Could even be Christmassy. So, well, Charlie B signing out. Remember, like, share, and subscribe.